Hey guys, welcome to my review of Raw. Um, basically, I'm not going to go through like every single segment and every single match and do it like that. I'm just going to like point out some of what I thought the highlights of the show were and talk about that. Um, so, basically it starts, Brian comes out, he says one word and that's yes. Um, Triple H music hits, he comes out um, and... Straight away they talk about the fast count. They show replays on the screen to prove that it was a fast count as if we didn't know. Um, they, he, he really emphasized the fact of how that count was fast. Brought Scott, on, Scott Armstrong out and Scott Armstrong said, um, he, I think he knows, he's catching on to us, something like that, to make it seem like Brian was involved. Now Brian obviously didn't know what he was talking about. Maybe Triple H came to Scott Armstrong and told him no, because then he wouldn't have fired him. Um, probably Scott Armstrong thought that was the only way he might keep his job um, by burying Daniel Bryan. But yeah, so that changed everything. Triple H was like, "This ch you can't do that. You, you um, fix the match. And Triple H strips Daniel Bryan of his title. Um, then Randy Orton's music comes out. He's upset. Why um, is he not getting the championship back. They go to the backstage segment um, and Stephanie McMahon and Triple H say they want the old Randy, the ruthless Randy, the, what, what what did he do? DDT'd Stephanie and all that stuff. Um, and that was, I thought, really good because from then, Randy Orton did do that in the show. And he, he faced the Miz in the Miz's hometown in front of his parents and just beat him up. Right in front of his parents, um, his mom did a great job selling it. His dad just kind of sat there, looked at him. Um, but I thought this was great. I love that Randy Orton, that like deadly heel, he just has no remorse. I think it's great. I'm um, using the chair to like break the person's neck. Um, and yeah, I just think that the, that's great. Um, and they had Heyman come out. Um, not really much to say, he just talked about how he owes Ryback his life and um, then, he gave Hank, then he gave Ryback a kiss and it was at that stage, it was like, okay, uh, moving on. Yeah. Um, surprisingly, we didn't get to see CM Punk in, in this show, like no CM Punk at all. You would thought that he would come out like having one of his rants to the WWE, uh, making fun of the fat people in the front rows, stuff like that. But yeah, we didn't see um, CM Punk at all. Then we had Ziggler vs. Um, Dean Ambrose in the non-title rematch from uh, Night of Champions and I knew Ziggler was going to win when they started and this is the problem with the Shield. Um, when the Shield's together they want them to be this force that they can't lose so if the Shield are standing outside they'll find a way. They don't want Ziggler, they don't want a person to beat one of them if the others are there. Now, they wanted, they obviously needed Ziggler to win that match to keep the feud going. But the problem is now, the Shield didn't go out with Ambrose. So the minute you see there's no Shield out with one of the other members, you know the Shield's going to lose. I mean, you just know it. Like, unless there's titles on the line, you know. If the other members of the Shield are not out there, that person is going to, the, the other member of the Shield that is wrestling is going to lose. And that's what irritates me. They should have the Shield out all the time. And I don't know, just <coughs> find a way that Ziggler overcomes it or something like that. Like, but do not have them come out and you know before the match even starts who's going to win. It's not, not, not on. Um, then you had Dusty Rhodes. Um, sorry if this is in order. I just wrote down what I th remembered like from the, from Raw yesterday. Um, J Dusty Rhodes comes out. Which basically to get his son's job back. Stephanie says, okay, we'll give you your son's job back. You just have to choose which one, Goldust or Cody. And obviously, being a father, you can't choose. That's like choosing who your favorite child is. And that you can't do, so you don't want to choose. Stephanie then brings up the shield in the big show. And he says, choose. Do you want to get knocked out by the big show or dismantled by the shield? He doesn't choose there either. Um, the shield come out with chairs first. It looks like the big show is going to stop them. And the Big Show realizes he's going to get hurt one way or the other. But he decides the lesser of the two evils is to knock him out. Um, bang. He falls. He catches him. They show him going into the ambulance and Big Show goes with him. That was the end of that. 
I think that that when when Stephanie McMahon had made him do that, that what started the WWE rock room getting fed up and maybe the rebel at the end, but I'll get there later. Then you have the number one contenders match for the tag team titles and what I really didn't understand it was a triple threat elimination tag. Now why were primetime players on it? Why were the Funkosaurus, Brodus Clay and Sweet T in that? And primetime players were nowhere to be seen. They were the number one contenders the night before and now they're not even in the match. Like, I can understand, okay. Maybe you decided you want someone else to face them, which they did, they wanted the Usos, who are, which I'm happy about. I think the Usos, they've been attacking for so long, they really do deserve, they, they deserve it. Through the out, because they came when the tag team division was dead. There was no interest in it, but they were in a tag team. And I just think that they do deserve it. Um, they're the best team. But to not have the primetime players in it, like have them in it and have them lose like something. Just don't like keep them out because it makes no sense. Like what merit do does Brodus Clay and Tensai have instead of them? It makes no sense to me. Okay, and then at the end of the match, Daniel Bryan... Um, Versus Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns gets disqualified and the shield comes out, starts beating up on Daniel Bryan. Um, Randy Orton comes out, he puts the chair on Daniel Bryan's head to do the same thing I did to Miz. And then a WWE locker room comes storming out and they rebel finally from the corporation. They start attacking them um, and finally the good guys stand tall. Um, I love this segment and what it did was. I was watching and I was thinking, fuck, I cannot wait for Raw next week. Well, and that's brilliant from the WWE to make me think that. I mean, I was watching the show and I was enjoying it, but that last segment, because of like what happened now, I want to know what's going to happen next so badly. And the minute that that happened, the first thing that went in my mind was, oh my gosh, a week, a week. I have to wait a week till next week. So I can watch Raw again, and I was like upset about that, and that's a great thing that the WWE is making me so interested that I like have that feeling that I can't wait for the next show. So yeah, guys, that's basically what I thought was noteworthy from Raw, the highlights of it, and yeah, cheers.